In this part of the lesson, we're going to use a combination of the techniques we've looked at in the previous few parts to build up a list of data on a worksheet. We'll start by opening up the file that I've already downloaded and extracted. And when you open the file, you'll find a list of very basic movie reviews. The idea is that you can enter a review for a new movie in this list of cells in column B, and then we want to be able to click this button to transfer these details to the end of the existing list starting in column D. Let's start by heading into the Visual Basic Editor then, and we'll have a new module that will contain all of the code that we'll write for this session. The first task is to find the next blank row in column D, as this is where we want our new film review to appear. To start with, we'll break this down into three separate stages. Firstly, we'll select cell D1, then we'll use the end property to find the end of the current list, and then we'll use the offset property to move down one single row from that point. So let's begin by creating a subroutine called select blank row. And from there, we know how to select cell D1. That's nice and easy. We've done that plenty of times already over the course of the previous lessons. From that cell, I'd like to move down to the end of the list. So I'm going to use the active cell property and then apply the end property to that, specifying the XL down direction and then select that cell. From the cell that I've ended up in, I want to again reference the active cell and then apply the offset property, moving one row down, zero columns to the right, and once again apply the select method to that. If I just rearrange my screen so that I can see both Excel and the Visual Basic Editor window, I'm going to use the F8 key to step through this sequence of instructions so that we can see range D1 becomes selected, then we jump down to the end of the current list, and then move down one single cell from there and end up in the correct position for pasting in the new film review details. It's a little inefficient to select three separate cells when all we really want to do is select the next blank one. So we can shorten this code and make it a little more efficient by eliminating two of the selects. Let's begin by removing the select at the end of the first statement and then also removing the active cell part from the beginning of the next one. So if we combine those two rows into a single instruction, range d1.endxldown.select, that would leave us in the last populated cell in column D. What we can then do is eliminate the next select. So I can take away the second select keyword and once again remove the active cell from the beginning of the next line so that we can simply say from range D1 at the end of the list in a downwards direction, offset one row down, zero columns to the right, select that cell. So it's not very exciting if I step through this procedure now because all we'll see happen is that we immediately jump to the next blank cell at the end of column D. But that works from any cell that I might have selected on this worksheet. So if I simply run this subroutine, I jump straight to that cell in one single instruction. Now I'd like to start transferring the value from column B where we've entered our new movie review into the current row that we've got selected. So to begin with, let's refer to the active cell and then modify its value property. I'd like to assign the value of cell B2 to the value of the active cell. So I can say range B2.value. What I then want to do is avoid having to move along the row to select each of the other columns and then transfer the values. So instead, what I'm going to do is start the next statement by referring to the active cell and then use the offset property to refer to the cell that is one column to the right. So I'm going to set the row offset parameter to zero and the column offset parameter to one. I don't need to select the cell one column to the right. What I can do is modify its value and make that equal to the value of cell B3. So I can say range B3 dot value. From this point, I can just continue offsetting the appropriate number of columns and then transferring the value from the appropriate cell. So rather than writing all that out again, let's take the efficient route and copy and paste. We can then modify the column offset to two. So remember that we haven't moved from column D. So to reach column F, I've got to move two columns to the right. And then I want to refer to cell B4. If I then paste in the same line that I've just copied, I can change the column offset to three and this time refer to cell B5, which has the name of the reviewer. Having done all that, I'll just rearrange my screen ever so slightly again so that hopefully we can see the entire range of data and then use the F8 key to begin stepping through. So the first line we already know that jumps down to the next blank cell. And now we'll see that all of the appropriate values begin to be transferred into the appropriate cells.
We can also now attach that subroutine to the button that we created. So if I switch back into the Excel workbook and then let's just remove the details that we've already added in so that we avoid adding the same film twice. I'll just select and delete those cells. I can then right click on the add to list button and then choose the assign macro option and choose the only macro available, select blank row. So to see the entire thing in one go, having entered the new film review, I can click the add to list button and everything gets inserted in one go. One thing to be careful of when using this technique to build up a list is beginning with a list that's completely empty. So let's start by just selecting all of these cells underneath the column headings in row one and then press the delete key to remove all the cell contents. If I then go back and click on my add to list button, things won't behave quite as expected. I'll end up with a runtime error. And if I click the debug button, it shows me which line has caused that problem. The reason this line has failed, if I can show you by stopping the procedure first and then selecting cell D1, imagine I were trying to replicate what the instruction was doing. I'd first of all be jumping down to the end of the list, which is the equivalent of holding down the control key and pressing the down arrow key on the keyboard. So this jumps down to the, well, there are no populated cells in column D, so it's the very last cell in the entire worksheet. I then try to offset one row beyond, beyond that cell. Um, and as there are no cells below that last cell in the worksheet, of course, the subroutine fails with a runtime error. If I press control and the up arrow key just to get back up to the top. A simple way to solve this problem is to replicate exactly what I've just done there. Start at the bottom of the worksheet, end Excel upwards, and then come back down one row using the offset property. So let's switch back to the Visual Basic Editor. And here, what we're going to do is change the cell reference from range D1 to range D1,048,576. It's a number you should be becoming more and more familiar with from this point. I then want to move in an upwards direction rather than a, a downwards direction. So I'll change the end property to use the XL up constant. And then I'd like to move one row further down from where I've ended up. So. If I now go back and click on my add to list button on the worksheet, I'll find that the details get added in the, in the correct place. Uh, if I just click the button a few more times to demonstrate that the list will build up step by step. So I've now solved that particular problem. At this point, you'll probably find it useful to move on to the extra practice session at the bottom of this page, which discusses an even more efficient way to build up this kind of system.